Okay, guys, welcome back. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to move along here in part of our uh, environment paint that we're working on. Please double check the blog because I've already had some students that are coming up to me and they're like, hey, Phil, how's this look? Like they're finished, like they're done. We're not done. We're probably going to spend the next three or four days working on this because I'm trying to give you guys some basic steps. The last video that we did was we blocked in an environment painting the background, the midground, and the foreground, okay? Look at these steps to follow that I put in here. These are pretty common steps. Uh-oh, I didn't do that, and I have no idea why it changed. Okay, these are pretty common steps and part of a normal, uh, a basic workflow, okay? We did a block in where we were talking about just blocking in the sky, throwing in some clouds, okay? Um, and then we then we talked about a block in now with like foreground, midground, and background. And if we look, this is where I left off last week, okay? Um, I had this sort of, we talked about exactly what we were going to do here. Let me t turn off the touch here. Sorry about that. I block in. I have what looks like some type of a structure, maybe a base or something up here. I have some rocks, so on. I have some elements in here that can be the foreground. I have something back in here for the, the background. This is all just sort of... I'm just flying through this. I have some rough clouds. I have a rough idea of what's happening, okay? The next step that we want to work on, which I put down here, step two, is refinement. This is where we start refining what we're doing. We start to identify some texture, some facades, the direction of the light. So if I look at your work, this is really, really important. A lot of students will skip this phase. If I look at your work and I can't see a direction of light, then there's a problem. So I'm going to see the direction of light by looking at the shadows, okay, having a good idea of, of where the light source is coming from, all right? Something that ties into step two of sort of refining is exploration. So what I thought I'd do is I, I gathered some reference and I put it up online here. I'm going to go ahead and click these open for you. These are some sample paintings from other artists, okay? Not any one way is the right way or the wrong way. There's some artists that work and they render out every single thing inside the frame. That's fine. Like when I found this piece here, I think this is nicely done. There is some photo blend in here. If you look over here, that is almost a pure photo. There's also some paint over on top of it. So here's a good example of somebody that's painted something in using a lot of photos and using some blend te techniques that we talked about in the last assignment. Okay, so if I come along here and here's something where you're going to see a lot of the photo blend is gone, okay? Now it's just sort of, it just looks like it's just pretty much paint with some textures painted on top. So what I thought I would do today is I would talk a little bit about refinement and refining and painting, okay? And then we'll get into that. So if you look here, look, we have definite foreground. We have some midground. There's some items back here. Is there atmospheric perspective happening in this piece? Absolutely. Look at some of the refined detail in here. Um, and then look at as we jump back here, that value is pretty close to that value. But then as we go back here, things get a little bit lighter. Here they get really lighter. And then it really drops back into the haze here. Someone, I, I've talked to a couple of students before in the past about, well, how does the atmospheric perspective happen? When does it happen? Is there a recipe? Does it move from this point along the, the you know, the color picker line? It doesn't, it, there's not always 100% recipe because some of it's going to be dictated by the different light conditions in the time of day. Okay, that's your, the, the, the reason why you're refining part of your piece because as you're refining it, you're also identifying part of your composition. So two things I, I thought I'd talk about today, which have to do with sort of the refinement process and exploration process, is some just basic painting textures about how do we get in there and, you know, paint like a rough looking road. How do we paint sort of a rock with snow on it? And I thought we would address some of that, okay? But if you get a chance, come back and take a look at this. You know, this is just some basic reference that I grabbed. Some of it is, you know, limited by size. But if you look at this, look at what they're doing. Look at the detail up in the front. Look at the snow and then look how something fades off. When you look at this piece right here, can you see the structure in the midground there? You can tell that that is a man-made structure. It is going vertical. That is not something that's created from these organics. It's uh, some type of a structure built on this hill. This is sort of what we're going for here. That's part of what I was doing in my sketch, okay? Here is a much more graphic sort of stylized piece, but still you have dedicated foreground, which is darker. And then as it recedes back, it gets lighter and lighter and lighter until we get in the back here. There are clouds painted up in the sky. Remember I told you as you start working and, and moving towards your piece and identifying it, you can create your own, let's say, 
technique or design emphasis, okay? This one is much more splotty, and look at this. There's like little areas and sections that have been selected that are just filled with paint. There's not blurred edges in part of these. There are hard edges on that, but that's okay. That's just sort of a stylistic approach. It still works, and it's still uh, identifiable, okay? Let's take a look at this guy here. Okay, look at how rough. Look at the clouds in here. Look at how rough some of this paint is right here. And then we get in here and we have a guy with some type of a little sorcerer, you know, staff sitting there. This is pretty common when people are getting into digital paint. One of the things that you tend to do is you, you need to, we talked about setting scale in a piece. That was going to come a little bit later in like the refinement exploration step and then the detail phase, okay? But by putting a little bit of an item right there and it indicates scale, it indicates how large the environment is. So if, if this character was much larger, the environment wouldn't feel nearly as large. Now, what's happening in this piece? I don't really know. I just see a, a red, you know, guy cloaked up here like a some type of a red outfit and then it looks like there's a crash ship on fire. That's all I can see. I have no idea what's happening in the story, but there's enough information there for it to be descriptive to me. Okay, let me scroll down here. Let's take a look at a couple of these others. So, you know, I grabbed these because I thought these were really important, you know, uh, bits of information. Look at this here. I really like what this guy did here because look at the dark to light transitions. Remember I was selecting part of my rock or snow with a lasso and I was just lightening and darkening it. They did that and then they just threw a texture on top of it and that was something I wanted to show you guys today, how you can quickly sort of paint something and then if you throw, if you start with local color, you address dark and lights of different shadow facades and highlights and then you come back on top of that and you throw like a texture on it and it immediately grabs the eye and makes something look you know, makes it look pretty real and um, and and makes it look passable for sort of a, 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 an area of realism for what we're trying to illustrate, okay? All right, so if you get a chance, you know, there's some really great information here. Now, this is somebody's painting. You can see the brush strokes in part of here, but if you look, you can definitely see the photo montage that's blended in here. I don't want you guys to go this realistic, okay, in terms of there's just a ton of photo montage in there that that well it's borderline between being you know a montage piece of realistic photos and then it's also lacking some of the digital paint but look there's a sky in there you can easily get into something like this just paint over it and add some more brush strokes to give it more of a painterly feel okay all right let's take a look at here's a nice one here okay look at the foreground here there's some trees obviously that are bare and then look there's like some type of a rock or cliff structure implying that there's a drop off and there's like a little crevasse in between here and then as we go back there's some trees back in here and look you have a little man-made structure again okay it looks like a little castle or something a little bit of a wall there's some mountains in there and look at that sky big dark you know sky that looks like it's about to rain or in the middle of a storm and then you have this light source sort of coming through you have shadows coming off of these elements I can see the shadow coming off that mountain so again they've refined it to this point where we can see the light source we can see what's happening okay I have little shadows back in here nice little little uh, speed paint there okay I like that one too I think that's a lot of fun okay I thought that one was pretty cool too all right and then I found some other reference that I put up if you want to look at this more reference up on the blog and uh, like I mentioned, I tried uploading this last class. So and then we still have all the other reference I gave you guys on types of clouds, other environments, and so on. I'm just going to keep adding on to this as one instead of doing, I could have done this as another paste, but just scroll down there and you'll see all the information. Okay. So what does that mean? As I come back into this where I left off from the last class, now it's time for me to start refining a little bit. And we talked about this sort of cube shape here, you know, having... Uh, a highlight side, a local value, and a dark side. So what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to come in here, I'm going to keep refining a little bit more. But what I thought I'd do is maybe paint a couple large areas and talk a little bit about texture and how to pop some things and just sort of move from there, okay? So this is where I left. This was like my blocking, okay? So in today's process, what I'll do, I'll stop the recorder, I'll paint for a little bit, I'll try to block in a little bit more, and then I want to show you guys how I'm going to start to develop the structure and maybe have somebody walking. I haven't really figured this out and I want to walk you through that process, okay? All right, so let's go ahead. I'll, I'll pause here real quick. Let me prep a couple things and then I'll show you what I'm doing and why I'm doing that, 
All right, so we'll be right back. Okay, guys, welcome back. I just paused there to save that. So one of the things I want to do, I'm going to work on my composition just for a minute here. So what I'm going to do, remember I had that drawing layer right here? I'm going to take that and I'm just going to merge that back down with my midground right here. I can always draw again on top of it and add something. This way I have it as one layer. One of the things I wanted to do is that when I'm looking at my composition, this is part of that refining phase, I want this to be a little bit larger in here. So I'm just going to come in and select part of this area right in here that I've sort of painted. Okay, this is all mid-ground. I'm going to go to transform. Then I'm just going to enlarge this up a little bit. See if I can get it to be a little bit larger inside my composition like this. So I'm just making a couple little adjustments. See if I can get that in there like that. That's pretty cool. I like that being a little bit closer. And then that maybe ties in. I think what I'll do is I'll work on like a hillside here or something and then make it look like there's people walking into this this environment here. But right there, let's look at the difference. Okay, if I command Z this. Look at how much larger it is here and look at where it was before. So do you see that? That's just compositionally as I refine something, I'm looking at it and I want that structure to be a little bit larger, so that's okay. And then what I'm going to do is deselect here. I'm on my, my mid-ground here. And I'm just going to come in. I'm going to finish blocking in these other uh, colors that I had right in here real quick to make up for that extra space in there. Okay. 100%. There we go. So I'm just finish blocking some of that in real fast. And I'll come back and refine that up a little bit more. There we go. All right, so um, something I thought I'd show you that's pretty cool is I want to come in here and refine up. I want to have like some type of a cliffside that's coming down in here and maybe sticking up right here. It looks like people are walking over trying to get up to this like base back in here. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do to get to that is I'm just going to experiment a little bit here, and I thought I'd show you guys a couple options that you can do. So I'm going to be working now in my foreground. So I'm going to come back over here to that foreground layer, and I'm going to select some of this and just start painting on top of it. Uh, what I'm going for here is, remember that when we talked about the cube here, having something with a basic surface adjustment of a light dark. My light's going to be coming from the left-hand side here, maybe sort of up above like this. So I'll have highlights on this side. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some of this, paint it, and then I'll keep building on top of it. And then I'll just sort of paint it and blend it in. And I wanted to show you that option of like creating a cool texture on something. So uh, real quick to show that to you, this is how I would sort of do that. Let me take all these layers off here. So we're just down to a base white page. Okay, so watch. If I come over here, let's say I'm going to make some type of a, a large, why is my Cintiq? Yeah, I know, it's wigging out right now. Let's say I'm going to make a large structure like this that's going to look like it has snow on it, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign this sort of like a base value. The same principle here is working on my cube, okay? And watch, we're going to go to fill, foreground color. There, that's filled, right? So next thing I'm going to do, since there might be some snow on it or lighter and darker sides, so I might come over here and select some of this interior area right here, okay? Sorry, I was supposed to connect all the way. And it didn't quite get there like that. Okay, I'm going to go to levels right now. And I'm just going to lighten that up a little bit like so. I'm sorry, guys. My computer is wigging out right now. Every time I go to give it a command, it's doing opposite. I think it's the recorder again. Um, let me make sure the touch is off. Off. Okay, good. Select. And I'm going to come in here and just put a couple of little streaks. It might be sort of the darker side. Of what I might be working on. Sort of like that. Make sure this looks a little bit more like sort of rock, okay? And then I'm going to come back over to levels again. Let's darken that up a little bit more. So I'm starting to get some immediate change of, of you know, form there because I have like a dark side, a little bit of a light side. I'm going to come in here a little bit and paint snow. So what I'm going to do is before I paint that snow, I'm going to imagine like the back side of the rock, the shadow side. So what I'm going to do is select some facades here and then maybe imagine that some of this is a little bit um, 
like these are little dark base, you know, little, how can I say, step movements in the perspective of as the typology of this moves across and drops down like this, okay? I'm imagining that's the back side. Therefore, when I paint the highlight on it, I already have sort of a little bit of a core shadow there. So watch. I'm going to go to levels real quick, and, and then I'm going to adjust this just really lightly like that, okay? And now, before I paint the snow on, the real cool thing that I really like about Photoshop is to throw a quick texture on that. What I can do is I'm going to put a layer up on top here. Let's come over here. I'm going to select a little bit of a darker value, okay, something like this. And remember, the, the key to this is I'm on a separate layer. So now I'm going to take my brush, I'm going to come down here, and I gave you guys these brushes that I have. Like I have this one here that's a heavy texture. Um, there's a couple ones. I have that one I called Awesome. Awesome can be cool sometimes because when you make it really large, see it just sort of does that. See that rough look, stony look like that? So if I come over right now with that brush and I just sort of tap a couple little spots here, make a little bit smaller. Tap a little there, here. Part of me wants to rotate it a little bit more. There, let's say I get something like that going. And see, it just blends a little bit of texture in there. Then I might come up as well and grab um, it's the one with the dots. There it is, like that. This heavy texture brush. I like that a lot too because as I sort of come across, that's it, full opacity there. Let me adjust it a little bit there. So what I'm doing is, see, I've just created some little variations in the texture of that. Now, I'm on a separate layer. So now I could come in here real quick with my eraser. Let me select the areas that I, I didn't want. Okay, let's delete that. Delete that. Okay, and so I'm getting a little bit of a blend in there. Now, as I come in here, and if I want to start painting a little bit more, see that texture creates a natural little transition for me. So as I come in here, and I start to, to look at painting like some snow on there, some little snow caps or little adjustments. Okay, so now... Is I come in here and if I select a little area like this and I say, okay, you're going to have a little bit of snow. Let me go up to like a 70% here. So this is going to be a little snowy area and that might come off and fade down a little bit. So as I'm painting this, I'm going to be adjusting. I'm trying to go on top where those little shadows were. I might have a little bit of a white clump in here. That might drop off a little bit. I might have some brighter little snow patch right in there. Okay. Sometimes I just like to throw a brush stroke or two on there so it just looks, you know, breaks it up a little bit more. And if you don't like the way the brush is going and you want to make something more specific, like if you want just to highlight in here, just use the lasso tool real quick. Select it, just get it very pristine down to what it is that you want. And now I can come in here with my brush, control H. And see, now it's just going to paint exactly that little highlight where I want it to because I have it selected. Okay. There we go. Okay, deselect. And then once I have it painted in, I could come back in with the same brush, and then I can blend in some corners or little edges if I want. Maybe there's a little bit more snow down on this side, and it's sort of coming off and then fades off a little bit, comes down here. So let me finish up. So, look, I did that really quick, right? So now I, I have something that looks much more, uh, resembles more of like a rocky stone texture or item. And what's cool about that is all that's on top of it. You see that? So if there's something I don't like, I can blend it in a little bit. If there's something I want to darken a little bit more, that's fine. You can do that as well. So now I'm going to come down here. I want to darken a little bit more of the shadow facade here. Let's go down to like three. So I'm just going to come across, stroke this with a couple of hits, darken up that little corner there, get some of that to fade off there a little bit. Okay. There. So now I'm going to go ahead. Let's commit. I'm going to merge all that together. Look, it's one little layer of rock now. Okay. Just took me a couple of minutes. I'm going to delete some of this extra overspray right in there. See, look, it's all movable. So now what happens if I come back and I turn on the rest of my piece? See, I have this movable layer here, and now I can position this where I want it. Say I want to get it up in here. I want it up to be a little bit high. I can transform it. I can move it around. I might even put it like up in here, and then I can come in here and really refine 
part of what I want. So now I'm, again, this is part of that refinement stage where I've painted a little bit of a texture. I'm thinking about dropping this, this large stone up here. There might be somebody standing on it, and then maybe they'd go on this transition from here and go downward, okay? So actually, let me do this. Let me duplicate that. I'm going to reuse that, and then I'll paint on top of it, okay? The one on top here, I'm going to darken just a little bit because it's more in the foreground, like that, okay? And then I'm going to come back over here. The one I duplicated is underneath, which is a little bit lighter. Let me see if I can stretch that and make it look like sort of a different piece. See if I can flip it this way. Maybe I'll rotate it up in here a little bit. See if I can get that to fit in there somehow. Okay. Maybe it needs to be just a little bit smaller. Actually, I like that idea if it's like this sort of cliff that looks like you wind down. Okay. See if I can get up in there. And, okay. Then I'm just going to paint on this, knock some of this back a little bit, and then come in here and start refining it a little bit more. Okay. So that snow isn't, you know, 100% right now. It's just some little details I put on there to get some sh shape and form of what's happening. But let me, let's take a look at what I just posted on there. So I've changed my composition. Now I've added in this guy. Let me bring him down a little bit more. Okay. I'll make him a little bit darker as well. Okay. Select. So now I'm going to come in and I'm just going to refine more. I'm going to come in here, paint for a little bit, and and uh, just keep adding a little bit more. And this is, you know, part of that that level that we we're talking about today. And we're looking at this is some of these highlights aren't going to be official. I might not like them. I might need to get in there, look at some reference, and really address how some of those changes are happening. So I'm going to do that. I also want to get like a little bit of a more of a rocky hillside on here. So what I enhanced already that I'm liking about my composition is I enlarged this structure shape that's going to be up on this hill that might be some type of like a little castle. Um, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to sketch in and paint like a little trail or something coming in between here. And then I'm going to paint some little side on this little hillside right here that sort of brings all this together. Also compositionally, um, this is the most interesting silhouette shape in my composition right now is what's transpiring up here. This will become sort of secondary, secondary, and then I'll start to put some indication of scale in here. But this also points me in this direction. I have this curve that's bringing me back down into this. So compositionally, I like a lot of the directional lines that are sort of taking place. Now I need to get in here and just start refining a little bit more and pasting in some detail and some other information. So I'm going to do that right now, and then I'll come back and show you what my layers look like. So I'll be right back. Okay, real quick, everybody, I just wanted to mention this because I was going to go work on mine for a while and show you what I'm doing and how I'm adding it. But a couple things I've noticed around the classroom that I want to cover really quick. Okay, uh, first thing is we're doing something rough in color, and a lot of you haven't had much experience in working in tone outside of basic drawing. So real quick, I'd like you to do this. This is a way you can answer some of your own questions on understanding values. Okay, remember, we talked about the use of the color picker, which is really great. If I click here, I can see how dark I am. I could click here to the midground, and I could see that jump. And if I click here to the to part of the background, so you see those transitions? I went from here to here to here. That means I'm creating atmospheric perspective in my sky. Look, from here, darker, medium, lighter and lighter okay I haven't worked on these mountains yet I don't know if they're gonna be gray or white or whatever but I can adjust that later okay the point is is that I'm already following this general guide of going from dark to light here's another great little trick that you can use okay when you're working inside any type of color work to check on your work okay um, create another layer above your work and I think I mentioned this on the last video I'm gonna show it to you again pick the color black okay uh oh Hold on a minute. Let's go back to brush. Sorry about that. I accidentally hit the... Okay. And take that layer. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to take my fill tool. Okay. I'm going to fill this whole entire layer with black. All right. See that? It's all black. Now I'm going to come over here. I'm going to touch. I'm going to put it on hue and saturation. Now I can look at my work really quick on another layer. Do you see this? I can turn it on and off. So when I'm working, 
I can get a good idea of how my values are working. This is really important. It breaks my work into a black and white piece. This way, I get a solid understanding of the value transitions. Do you see how it's a little bit easier to see now how dark this is? And even this gets lighter, and then that's lighter, then that's lighter, and then I have the sky back there. Okay? I've created a lot of natural transition already in my piece, and I've just started to refine. I haven't really gotten into a ton of detail. So this is a good point right here to do this. Now, those of you that have a dual monitor, there's another way. If you have enough RAM in your computer, you can set up another working window under proof setups in Photoshop, which is really cool. As you're painting in color, you could be looking at another window that's showing you the black and white version of your painting. That's why a lot, some artists and even myself, I like to work with two windows sometimes because I can look at my work as a black and white tonal study as I'm working in color. That's another really efficient way to work. Okay. So anyway, this is where we sort of, I wanted to leave things off is our blocking point and doing that quick little demo for you guys today on how I just created that, that rough texture surface. And let's say I want to go in here right now, I want to create some more. I can do that very efficiently just by doing local color, putting on some rough texture on top of it, and using the selection tool uh, and using levels to quickly create some uh, real quick changes in items, okay? And so we'll come back to that in a little bit. I'm dying to get into some detail and refining my work up a little bit here, and then we'll talk about that, okay? So we'll be back in a little. Okay, guys, welcome back. I, I just wanted to show you a couple things that I've been doing and how I've been manipulating my piece here and show you where I'm at um, real fast. So let me turn everything back on and come back, and I'll show you the parts that I've been adding in here. Okay? Wait one second, mid. Okay, so this is sort of where we... Hold on a minute. What am I missing here? So this is sort of where we left off right here. This is what I had, and what I did is I just created this sort of darker structure right here just with the rocks and some snow and then I started painting what looks like a little bit of a path and I did that again by defining you know just like that cube when we talk about that cube right light dark okay it's the same principle because I'm going around and I'm seeing a couple people working and they're forgetting this principle right here this is a basic drawing foundation principle some of you guys are not changing facades by using light to indicate shape and form here okay so I'm doing that if I were to minimize my little cube here, okay, oops, wrong layer, I'm doing that right here. See, look, light side, a little bit of a shadow side, dark side, light side, dark side, you know, medium side. So that's how I created that little pathway there, okay? After I did that, i just like to show you my, my progression. I added on a little bit here to the right side too, okay? This is above the horizon line. It's sort of like this cliff going up it. My horizon line's down here, okay? The next thing that I did and part of my progression is, hold on a minute, let me figure out where it is here. Um, I accidentally drew an eraser line down there. That's my bad. Okay. Um, give me a second here. I'm too busy talking, not focusing. That was mid foreground. What's the other thing I did? I did something else. Where did it go? Oh, here it is. The mid. So what I did then is I just took my lasso tool. Now watch how easy I'm going to do this. I selected this foreground right here, okay? I copied and I pasted it. I moved it on down underneath the mid layer here, okay? Underneath this right here. So I took the part of this overlay here. I, I copied and pasted. I moved it down. I lightened it, and then I created this right here, okay? Do you see this? Let me show it to you. That is this flipped down transform it and I flipped it to the right so watch if I hit transform and if I were to flip it back see how it's that structure there okay and I just lightened it so I just lightened it real quick and what I did is I dropped that underneath here lightened it up and then I just started to put a couple strokes across to greet that sort of snow effect with that if I go back to my brush here I have that oily hard edge that I created right I gave you guys that and I just sort of went across here really lightly putting in some white highlights in there. So and then I have this weird rock, and what I was going to do is I was going to come in now and start to erase some of this because I like that transition of this looking like it's like some type of a snowy 
lake down here that has a little bit more refined detail and then it's going to transition into the rocks right here. Now after I got that in there I realized like wow I might need to darken this up a little bit here in the foreground to get that to come forward because the values here are starting to pop a little bit. So let me work on this right now. I want you to get used to using your layers. Use your layers with something you painted, painted already by transforming, manipulating it, moving it to the side. Let me show you right now. Look, I might grab some of this rock that's in here like this, just by selecting it like so. Okay, and watch. I'm just going to go to the Move tool right now. Hold on a minute. We wanted that in there. There we go. And look, I'm just going to move those rocks off. Look, and put some down here. Do you see how I did that? How easy? I'm just going to move those, drop them down here. It's all the same layer. I haven't copied or pasted anything. It just allows me to create some more cool, funky little rock structures. If you prefer to get in here and erase them a little bit, you know, when I think of tundra, I think of like rocks with snow on them and built up, and I could use that to my advantage too as I'm getting into part of my composition here. Now, I look over here, and part of what I pasted in here, it's covering up some of this detail that I had, and I wanted this to be like a snowy blanket. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here with my eraser. And I'm going to start to erase, you know, and blend some of this in here and see how I can get this to sort of lightly come together. Okay, this is part of that refining stage, right? There we go. That's sort of cool. Okay. And I have this sort of area down here. Let me see if I want to move that over a little bit. Maybe bring it over here a teeny bit. Now, I still feel like I need to lighten a little bit because part of that value is pretty dark right in here. So let's check that by putting on that that cover right here. Do you see this? When I put that layer up on top right now and I turn this to a value adjustment, I could come in here and look at the difference in my tonal study. That is a little bit of dark. It's not too bad, but if I come over here and if I lighten it just a little bit like so, see how cool that is? That's perfect. I lightened it just a little bit right there and it's not nearly as combative as what was up in here. That's perfect for me, right? Excellent. Okay, so now I'm going to turn off that black layer and I can look at what I have. That's nice, and I have that nice little blend in there that's starting to take place. Now, one thing I don't have on here is I have sort of like a front side, but I haven't indicated any like darker little shadow areas. So what I'm going to do really quick is I can come down and select and pretend that might be like the darker side of the stone right there, just ever so lightly. And I could just select a couple of little areas. I could take one of my brushes that I have and uh, let's do this shady texture, and I can grab a little bit of a darker value. And I can just hit, if I hit H, look, and I just lightly sort of hit that. You see that? It just defined a little bit of a change of, of side right there. So now I have this pathway. I'm getting some detail down here. I thought I'd show, show you guys another cool little thing that I do to create details sometimes is I use, I work large and then I shrink it small. Okay, so I thought I'd show that to you real quick. Let's say I wanted to get some more snow detail up in here or something down in here a little bit, okay? So I'm going to do that really quick for you, okay? Here, let me, um, what I'm going to go and do right now is just to show you the before and after. Look, that's where I was when I left, and then I, you know, I added this, refined this a little bit, the path, added what's down in here, and I'm starting to like what I'm starting to develop in here now, okay? Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to commit to these. I'm going to grab these right now. I'm going to merge them all together so I'm back on one sort of layer with my foreground and midground here. However, though, I made one mistake. Let me merge this back in. Actually, I sort of like that. Let me, let me get this in the right area here. So I add foreground here. Let's bring this back to foreground. You know, let me figure out my layers real quick and then I'll show you that technique. One sec. I'm just going to pause for a minute and hit resume. All right, sorry about that. I just wanted to get my layers together. I like working on, you know, three or four layers. I kept some of my sky separate here so I can change this as I'm continuing my piece here. But let's just look at where I'm at right now. I have an overlay right here, okay, of the foreground. And then I have the midground in the back and then I have the background, okay. The other thing I did in here really quickly is I just came over here and I separated that line drawing and I put a little bit of some just a little bit more mountain detail that I'm going to start to define a little bit later, but I just wanted to get a couple facades turning in there. Okay, so let me show you what I was talking about with that texture option, how you can work large and shrink it down, and it can really work to your benefit, especially with snow, tundra, and stuff like that. Okay, so watch this right now. I'm going to create a layer here. I'm going to label this X for experiment, okay? And watch what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to come over here. I'm on a separate layer, 
and I'm just going to come in here with some white, okay? And look at what happens if I just come over here and I just streak across like this. And what I'm going to do is just sort of make some weird patterns like this. This always works to your benefit. Sometimes I can even go dark. I mean, go a little bit lighter and then recede and get a little bit darker as it goes back there like that. Now, look at this. See what I just did there? That's just a bunch of ridiculous paint, right? It's nothing particular. It's just on a separate layer. But if I move this up to the top and if I transform it and scale it down, do you see how that could fit up as like little highlights of snow up there? Or how if I come over here and I turn it a little bit, I might be able to blend that over somehow. Actually, watch this. Let me put it in like this. Let me stretch the heck out of it like so. Get it like that. And then if I bring it down in here, okay, and if I, here, I'm going to drop it down on top of my mid so it's underneath my foreground right now, okay. Do you see how these little bits of white stretched out start to look like little highlights on top of rocks? Is that, anyone, you guys follow with me? Yeah, but you see how I did that real quickly? Okay, and so look, when I look down here right now, that's pretty cool. See, it looks like I have, like, tops of rocks now with some white on them, some other detail. So look, before and after. Okay, so I can move that around, find a spot where it might fit. I think that's pretty cool. Okay, I do this all the time for sort of, if I have to do a road texture, walkway texture, even stone patterns. Now watch, I did that super quick with that. Now watch, watch what would happen if I did it like this. Okay, let me create another layer up. Let me label this, I'm gonna call this X2. Okay, so let's say I wanna get some other variants. Check this out. If I look at this structure right here, what if I did that same thing, but instead of using the brush, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna select something like this. See, I'm just making selections. I'm on a different layer, just patterns. This is, give a whole lecture and just using Photoshop, creating these various patterns that can become my benefit for how I manipulate them. Now this time, I was thinking about putting a little bit of some like a bird umber brown in there. So look, I have that selected, right? Okay, what I'm gonna do right now is come back with my brush and just sort of go dark a little bit. And then I'm gonna hit down to like four and try to fade some of this in, you see that? So it's not all one consistent fill. It's like darker, a little bit lighter here. Okay, do you see how I just created that real quick with a little bit of brown? Now I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna grab a little bit of blue. I'm gonna go to my other brush, that greasy edge brush that I have, that I, I just, it's one of my favorites. Where is it, oily hard edge right here? Okay, now that I have that selected, I have a little bit of a, some blue. I'm gonna come in and just put a little pattern of some blue in there in a couple places. See that? Get that in there. Just a little bit lightly like so. And now look at what happens. Look at that. Let me hit deselect. This is on another layer. Do you see how it's just floating there? But if I take that, I transform it, I scale it down, and I come up and I could find a place in my piece where I could blend some of that in. Let's see where we can blend that in really quick. Actually, I was imagining it sort of being up here on this hillside. It's still, it's a little dark because I'm painting something further in my midground there. So what I can do is just come down here and drop down the values a little bit and get some of that to blend in there. And that's sort of cool because now it looks like there's maybe like a little bit of a rock structure up there. So then I could erase some of this that's blending in a little too much. Okay. And that's it. I'm going to take that. Let's drop that down. I'm going to drop bring that down into my mid here, and boom, I'm going to hit E, and there, I'm going to combine it into one layer. So now it looks like, as I'm up here on this structure, I have a little bit of this sort of brown rock information pattern that's sort of coming through, and that's pretty cool, because it's, it's just a little variation for me to put in there, and it looks like it might be a little bit of stone. Say, so as I could paint a little bit of that in there somehow, get that to fade in. And I like that thought of, you know, when you look at stone, there's browns, there's blues in it, there's, you know, granite, sandstones, and so on. I'm going to take a little piece of this up here that I've already painted. I'm going to copy and paste that. Okay, let me move it down here. Let me transform it a little bit like this. Let me see if I can get that to sort of nudge in here like it's another piece of granite down there, and that's actually pretty cool. Look, I'm going to erase a little bit off of that so it looks like it's a sort of 
There, see how that just sort of fit in there? Okay, let me see if I can move it around a little. It's about right in there. And look, even those blue little lines got in there. Okay, that's perfect for me. I like that a lot. So let me just commit to that layer. Here, merge it back in together. Okay, now I might come in here and start to paint. I, you know, have some hard edges on there and see if I can blend some of that together. So I'm going to zoom into it real quick and then I'll paint some detail on that for a little bit. And again, this is my refinement stage. So look at what I've done. I've refined my foreground. I've added some other composition elements in here. Now I'm going to come in here. Let's start refining the station right here. And I'm going to start adding what I call some man-made elements in here. Okay. So, and I, something really cool with man-made elements is that what are man-made elements? What do they tend to be? So I get my glasses here. Man-made elements are what? Buildings, That's right. So what do we notice about buildings and all those types of elements? Huh? Curved. They can be curved, but they also can be 90 degree angles a lot of times, right? So there's some really quick steps and procedures that we can do when we're working that if I want to add, there's actually some cool brushes. I have them at, at home. Actually, I have them here. It's a huge brush li library I got off of like refineries and stuff like that. But let me show you real quick. I'm going to start to define that structure a little bit. And the reason why is I'm refining right now. I don't want to over detail my foreground or midground. I want to have some areas become what I call lost and found edges. So what I'm going to do really quick in, is I'm going to come in here on a new layer now and I'm going to start to refine part of the station right here. And I'm going to show you very quickly how I can do that. Okay, so all right. Let's start right here. Let me take a lasso tool. First thing is if I have this base like up here, what if it had something like this? What if it had some type of structure that rounded out like this? Okay, so I'm gonna take that, right? Brush, let's come in here. Start to paint a little bit in here. Get some blues in there. So this is basically my version of a possible there, I got that in there like that. Okay, let's deselect it. So I have that area that pops out there right now. What I'm going to do is I want to separate the edges there. Okay, I want to get a little bit of a darker value. So I'm going to select some of that darker view blue that's right in there. Actually, when I just do it like this, just select that edge like that of what I painted. It's a different layer, right? So I'm just going to go to levels. I'm going to darken that just a teeny bit right there. Okay, there. So now I've created a change of some form, some detail. Okay, I might come in here put a little bit of a, of a white highlight going across some of that edge to make it look like it's a little reflective. Okay, so I'm getting some of that in there. And the rest of it, I just sort of get in there and I start penciling in and just figuring out, you know, maybe there's this, oops, maybe this, this little curve is like a landing pad and it comes down. And maybe I have, I think of man-made, right? Maybe I have a little bit of a support structure. Oops, let's go back to that darker color. So maybe I have a support structure that's in here that needs to come down. Maybe there's like a little antenna here, a little deal on the on the sticking out out of the corner here like this. See that starts to make it look like it's more man-made. And even what if I get down here and I have another one that sort of comes out a little bit? Maybe there's multiple platforms. Again, I'll grab a little bit of some highlight, throw a little bit of a, of a highlight going across sort of the top of that, just a little bit. Just block it in. Okay, so now I'm starting to add a couple little more elements here. I want to see if I can get some of this rock um, that I had in this previous layer. I want to copy some of that, and maybe I could find a way to merge some of that in there just a teeny bit here. Okay. There, it's on a separate layer. See if I can bring some of that over a little bit. Okay. Um, now, a another thing I could do is I could put like a little uh, man-made structure that looks like a, some type of antenna or something, right? Uh, something that's square that might be popping up here that might have a facade or, or the front end of like a building, whatever it might be. So let me just try that out. Let me merge these two together. 
Okay, here, I'm just going to come over here real quick. I'm going to take the hard edge lasso tool. I'm just going to do this, and it's going to come up. Okay, I'm going to angle up a little bit like this. And then it might come down a little like so. It might come back over again like this. Okay, just like that, okay? And let me drop this behind. Okay, let me relabel that mid here. I don't even know what it is real quick, guys. I'm just sort of roughing it in there. I could refine it a little bit later. Maybe there's a little bit of snow on the top of that. So I'm just going to keep going from here, pushing and pulling, refining, develop this a little bit more. So I'll pause the video here. I'm going to come back up. I, I want to get some nice detail in there because I want the eye to sort of pop up and look up there. So I'm going to start addressing that right now for the next uh, 15 or 20 minutes here. Okay.